Another Grievance Newscast. It is Sunday. It is beautiful. Welcome to the Mog House! And welcome to Wave Clear, your MOBA newscast. I'm Seth Zuko. Welcome to another episode of Debuff the Star Citizen Report. Welcome to the second exciting episode of Azeroth Almanac. I am your host, Eggy, along with all my other fellow hosts. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Geek Side. Woot! Um, we've had a little bit of an issue here. Um, if you guys have been paying attention for most of the evening, uh, things are going great with having Santiago on, and then his internet crashed. And we were having a good time in pre-show. It was absolutely hilarious. He was set up in the back room of a uh, of a bar, so he is, you know. Popping into the uh, into the beer ca- beer cases, bringing out some reds and some other things, some Smirnoffs, and uh, actually we had nice mood music too because apparently there was a couple bands going on around him too. There was <laughs> and bad karaoke, very very yeah, bad, bad karaoke. Bad karaoke. <laughs> and actually, uh, uh, uh. I think I think the joke honestly was is that the that the uh, the the singer on stage was so bad that she broke the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> it oh. yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the Wi-Fi broke, and he was trying to find something somewhere to stream from. Uh, but that's unfortunate. Last we heard, we've tried getting a hold of him. We don't know if he's having issues. We don't know what's going on. But the night's getting long, and we don't want to leave you guys in a stump. And we also don't want to put off the show again because we hate putting off the show. We like doing this. Well, yes. that and I have another meeting in 30 minutes. so yes. Yeah, that too. So <laughs> and- we... We went ahead and we grabbed Steelheart because we're just going to kind of freeform this, have some fun, talk about a couple things, maybe throw some Grievance and QuestCon in there, and uh, I think call it there. So without further ado, with me tonight, we've got Shiv. What's up? We've got Zosian. Hello. And we've got Vanquish. Where? I know, he ran away. He, oh. He's blending in with the green screen. You know, it's awesome. Yeah. He's got two primary colors there. The green, the Still. blue. You know, I could really mess with him, but I don't have time yeah. to set that up. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest for this evening. We have the one, the only, oh. the, the progenitor, the uh. progenitor, the, the most awesomest fireman of the year on, on, uh, <laughs> on calendars everywhere. <laughs> the ladies' man himself. <laughs> Steelheart! Uh, hey! Um. Y'all get a bad reputation now. <laughs> that is what we're here for. So, we'll go ahead and hop into it. Like I said, we're going to freeform a little bit. Uh, Zoe, I think you know a little bit more about this. Uh, what is Marvel's Cloak and Dagger that is supposed to be coming to some uh, to the small screen? Uh, yeah, um, Cloak and Dagger is a... Uh, a or two superheroes one is made out of darkness and one is light the powers are light and darkness um cloak is the uh the darkness powers and light is um a dagger is the light one she can form light um like daggers and stuff like that and attack people or even heal drug additions and or heal them and um and darkness heal, is you say you heal drug addictions yeah. Yeah. Yes. Huh, okay. See, um, this this was a really interesting series. I remember collecting this when I was a teenager, and and my father collected comic books also, and this was more his thing. But but I'd always read them and and collect a few. All and it's a really interesting story. And and Zoe will tell you more about it in a minute. But it it wasn't one of your Superman, Spider Man, you know, really out there comic book heroes. But it was really really good stories. Cool. They were runaways, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Yes, both of them were born and raised. Uh, um, Cloak came from a very bad background, um, impoverished and stuff like that. And uh, uh, Light, uh, sorry, Daggers, uh, comes from a, a rich background. And they both ran away from home. Um, they're teenagers, and they they try and they basically are trying to survive and they run into these people that gives them these powers and stuff like that um i put a link in the chat to the article that i have recently read um from variety about it it's going to be coming on 
ABC Family, well, was ABC Family, now it is called... Freeform. Freeform, yes. It's called and, what? Uh, Freeform. 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 I hadn't heard that. Yeah, th- I haven't either. Is this still going to be a Disney property? Isn't, isn't ABC yes. Disney? Yeah. Uh, they renamed the channel to Freeform. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. Disney still owes them. That's why they are able to bring this show to that channel is because Disney owns them. Which is interesting that they're breaking away from Fox because most of the other Marvel stuff on broadcast television is all on Fox. Now yeah. they, no. Well, is that um, well, isn't uh, uh, Agents of Shield on Fox? Y- yeah, no, Agents of Shield is on Fox. ABC, isn't it? ABC. Is it just ABC. ABC. Yeah. Only only thing Fox owns is uh, X Men's. In fact, four. But this okay. goes all back to the whole copyright trademark oh, God, thing, yeah. dividing them on Paramount and ABC <sighs> and Fox and and all of them. Um, you know, up until what about six months ago, they didn't even even share their rights with people. Now we see Spider Man and the Avengers and and right. a little, little crossing going on. So that's a, that's a good thing. But you know, that's why um, the Avengers too. Never use the word mutants for Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch because the other company, whichever one, I don't remember which one owns Fox. which, but the other, fo- the other company owns the rights to the word mutants as far as being used in the superhero world. It's, it's, yeah, and, it's just so hard to keep track of. It, it's all over the place. It really is. Well, well Sony, was, yeah, Sony still owns Spider-Man. That's why they yes, keep putting out those yes. crappy movies every couple years so they don't lose <laughs> the copyright. But this all goes back to Marvel. Back when comic books were starting to phase out around 2000, a little bit after, Trying having to make some money. sell off a lot of their intellectual properties mm. and, and make a buck, like Spider Man and X Men. And, and now DC owns Marvel, so they got to deal with all this crap. Yeah. Disney, not DC. Oh, yeah, sorry, Disney, yeah. <laughs> DC! Oh, somebody just got in some really extreme nerd rage somewhere. <laughs> You'd be careful, they might actually be watching the show. <laughs> hey, real quick, special shout out to a friend of mine, Zucker Reigns, joining us for the first time. Welcome. So, shout out Welcome. to her. Awesome. Sweet. So, now, is this Cloak and Dagger, their runaways, are they like a love interest? I mean, is this like a, yes. like a semi-romance, semi-action? I mean... Yeah, um, uh, Cloak and Dagger, yes, they are, they, they, throughout the series of comics, they do become romance with each other, yes. And uh, one thing, how Darkness survives, because he has to absorb light, she has to give her light to him where he can survive. Yeah, where he don't that, have to... Now, they didn't start out that way in the comic <clears throat> books. They kind of fell in love after a little bit. But they, they are almost codependent to begin with. That, that they're, I can't remember exactly. Like he says, he needs her light. But she, if I recall, she also needs something from him too, doesn't she? I think so. so long so. as I've read them. I'm actually going to have to pull up uh, uh, the Marvel Unlimited thing and read through them again. Uh, but like I said, it's I, I'm excited about it because it's another show. And let's see, we got Agent of Shield, which is actually becoming really awesome, especially since Daisy Jones got her powers. Uh, uh, I, she's my favorite character on that show. Uh, Mockingbird is getting her own show. A pilot has been ordered on that also. Hmm. For her, I don't get her she's own strong show. enough to have her own show. Um, her and uh, the other guy, the British guy. Uh, they, uh, sorry, guys, for spoilers. Uh, just a spoiler warning here. Um, if you hadn't watched recently, they been excommunicated, <laughs> basically. From they had to be denied that they were part of Shield recently, and I won't say why. You had to go watch the episode, but. Uh, um, to say they mess with the Russians or something. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, but, yeah. But I'm excited about this. I don't know about y'all, but I know I recently just brought this up just a little bit ago. But um, I'm excited about this new show. No, I think it's awesome that all That's these uh, su- superhero movies and TV shows and all these things that you know we used to read, I wouldn't say clandestinely, but if you, read, if you talked about it openly, then uh, you, know, you were looked down upon. Uh, but I think it's awesome that we have our time to shine and... and uh, to see all these amazing stories come to life. You know, but it actually brings up another question. 
Um, just like reality TV shows that stayed popular for a decade and were really, really, you know, when they hit, you know, what was the, oh, crap, I can't remember what the name of the island was, but Survivor, um, Survivor and, you know, Big Amazing Brother, Race. Amazing yeah. Race, when they hit, they don't lie about having too much Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've shut it out, but no, they're going to come, all of a sudden we're going to see all these R-rated movies come out that don't have no reason to be. And have no yeah. reason to be R-rated just because Deadpool did so well. They're going to try and and milk that, and I yeah. think they're going to screw themselves. Yeah, okay. yeah, they will. They they will. They absolutely will. Uh, uh, the, Deadpool to be honest, likes the R-rated, but most superhero movies, they. I mean, yeah, superhero. I, I like kids. the TV not, stuff not, better. Not kids, but you know, that's we all read comics when we were young. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. To be honest, I like the TV stuff better. Now, 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 for yeah. those of y'all that don't DC know what comics is, they were actually printed on paper. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they still are printed on paper. They're, they're still comic you, book shows. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Before you okay. had your tablets, station before we went live about having too much Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've shut it out. But no, they're going to come. All of a sudden, we're going to see all these R rated movies come out that don't have no reason to be. And have no yeah. reason to be R rated just because Deadpool did so well. They're going to try and, and milk that, and I yeah. think they're going to screw themselves. Yeah, okay. yeah, they will. They, they will. They absolutely will. Uh, uh, the, to be honest, the R-rated, but most superhero movies, they, I mean, yeah, superhero. I like, I like kids. the TV not, stuff not, better. Not kids, but you know, that's we all read comics when we were young. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. To be honest, I like the TV stuff better. Now, now for yeah. those of y'all that don't DC know what comics is, they were actually printed on paper. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they still are printed on paper. They're, they're still comic book shows. Oh show. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Before you okay. had your tablets. But yeah, I was just going to bring that up. I was just going to ask about the devil's advocate part here, just saying how much is too much. You know, yeah. when you've got these shows on pretty much every channel back to back, you know, how long How long are we going to last before they get There's only so much that we can consume anyway. I mean, I have limited time. When, I mean, I work and everything else. I just don't have time to, unless I start screwing off at work, I'm pretty sure that's not going to go over <laughs> Uh, you know, mine's hit or miss. We got Netflix and all that stuff, you know, at fire stations. And when we're not out saving the world, <laughs> <laughs> we we do catch up on our superhero movies. Now, do yeah. you ever, you know, throw on a cape and run around the station just because you are, like, a semi-superhero? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> had to ask. Had yeah. to ask. Okay. okay yeah, just tie one of the coats around your back, you know, and just have fly around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, um, do we want to touch on anything else before we kind of jump to the next subject? Uh, I think we covered it pretty well. Uh, All right. Wait, well, real quick. When's this supposed to come uh, out? So? Uh, this fall, actually. Awesome. All right, jump away. All right. Keep an eye out for that then. All right, I'm going to show you some video of some awesomeness because this is, you know, awesome. Show video of me? Oh, We're no. already on video still. It's more awesomeness. Oh, yeah. Right. All right, go ahead. <laughs> oh, awesome. Other awesomeness. Yes, other, other awesomeness. Other, yes. It is. Is it not going to show? Why isn't it showing? <laughs> Our <laughs> night with technology. <laughs> Come on. Give it something. All right. Let me remove this and re, re, re add it. Move In the meantime, Vanquish is going to sing. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love my darling. <laughs> 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 I not sign up for this. <laughs> oh man! So, all right, now we're gonna do this again. All right. Maybe that is some awesomeness right there. <laughs> Whole ton of awesomeness. Oh yeah, this with that landing. Oh, oh. yeah. What amazing you... how technology is getting now. What you saw right there, for anybody who has not paid attention to the news or anything and not a space geek, that was SpaceX for the first time landing their first stage rocket and with a successful landing to be able to reuse. This is what they've been this is what they've been uh, working on for a few years now and spending a ton of money on as they're working Getting up into space is expensive. They're trying to reduce the cost of it. And if they can get a reusable rocket and get several uses out of it, they can bring the cost of getting goods into space and getting people into space by by billions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I want to go to the moon. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to go to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Think how many millions hard. of dollars this saves. And not only that, quick turnarounds. Mm -hmm. NASA has been plagued for years, decades, with having to have extra rockets. You know, or, or I don't know how many they kept in their shed, so to speak. I'm sure they had a backup pair, but, you know, literally millions upon millions of dollars are going to be saved if they perfect that. Now, you know, the test they had not too long ago didn't end quite so well. No, that's true. Um, so when they could do it, you know, first time's luck, second time is is learning, and third time is perfection. You well, know. the thing is that that ship it landed on is actually a drone ship. It yeah. They controlled it, and it it tracked a rocket as it was coming down, and it they met each other. Basically, yeah. they did a an Earth Wonder view. Just the programmers that do this, like I mean, even the NASA guys at uh, at uh, JPL, the fact that they're programming satellites to have course corrections years and years into the in, from now, just to be able to you know navigate the solar system is really insane. It is. It. Yeah. But, it, go ahead. No, I was going to say, they, they need to make space a little bit cheaper because we need to have our get-together there eventually. Because <laughs> yes. how, how else are you going to top up a castle this yes. year? So eventually yeah. you need to have grievance get-together on, on the moon. On the moon! Oh, no, we yeah. got to go to the ISS first. got to do the ISS and then the moon. Okay, ISS is big enough. enough. I, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> it, it damn sure won't be big enough for our get-togethers by then. We're going to have over 100 people this year in Atlanta. Not as much so, as I am. <laughs> okay, which brings us into our next topic, grievance. Still, so, what? Tell us about grievance, since you're the head honcho. Me? <laughs> oh, the master? Oh, yeah. Me. Oh, Lord, really? <laughs> I'm going to go on record to say I'm not going to butter you up, Steel. So go ahead. <laughs> Whereas it can be fun in certain situations, uh, no. <laughs> Go ahead with your question, Mr. Zoe. Well, I, well um, I'm pretty sure there may be people here who don't know what grievance is. Um, give us a, a lowdown on grievance. Uh, grievance is a multi-gaming community that's been around for, it will be 16 years this October, consists of over 10,000 gamers world, literally worldwide. Australia, Israel, Europe, Canada, South America. Um, I actually think we have somebody at the North Pole now, believe it or not. Really? Wow. You know, it's our age range is obviously 18 plus. We range from 18. Um, I think the oldest member I saw come across, come across the registrations form was 84 last year. And she was really 84. She was a gamer. I, I think it was Elder Scrolls. Don't take my word for it. But she was actually an 84-year-old gamer. I talked no to her. Speak. There's no doubt about it. She was 84 years old and just as spry as you could be. But we encompass um, around 60, 70 games, um, multiplayer, MMOs, shooters, MOBAs, whatever. And, and you know, we're just our tenants are family, honor, and loyalty. So... Obviously, that's what we believe in. So we're not hardcore. We're not casual. We're everything, and we're just one big giant happy family that usually likes to drink a lot of tequila every June. <laughs> speaking of June, speaking about a family family guild, what's coming up in June? <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be your guest tonight. <laughs> we're putting you on the spot. I was just helping you with the cast. All right. So uh, June is the real life get together. This will be number fifteen or sixteen. Um, we used to do two a year, then we skipped a couple years. So I think it's number fifteen or sixteen. It's somewhere in there. But we'll say sixteen because it's easier to keep track of because it's two thousand sixteen. So anyway, we've been doing these quite a long time, and it's where grievance members from all over the world come and they meet somewhere. Um, this year it's literally an eighteen thousand square foot castle on a lake with a freaking pool the size of my house, um, and and a hot tub the size of most pools actually <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's um this place is amazing it's it's got the kitchen in itself has like four ovens two pizza ovens and this is one of two kitchens i believe um two pizza ovens um it's got one or two bars in it a home theater it is an amazing place we found this year to have our real life get together at We'll, we'll be doing 
tons of roundtable discussions. With we'll have a lot of founders there this year. I think last count was seven or eight, it's the most we've ever ever had. Nice. It. Let's get together. Of course, we'll do the leadership discussion and everything. There'll be the big all day and night barbecue Saturday. Um, I, list of events is like Thursday night is ladies' night where the ladies' grievance get together, and I think Marissa has Cards of Humanity planned for them again. Um, before that, there's an officer meeting where anybody who's an officer in any of the guilds in the grievance organization will come and, you know, we'll just sit around and talk about some things, usually have a good time, drink tequila. Um, <laughs> now, now um, why did this start? Why did you start doing this? What, what's up with the get-together? You know, this wasn't me. <laughs> Believe it or not, this wasn't me. Kukos came to me. Actually, it was a, a, one of our members named Tiberia. She couldn't make it to SOE Fanfare at the time. It wasn't even called SOE Fanfare. I don't remember what it was called 15 years ago. She oh. thinking of it. And, and SOE Live. Um, I, God, it wasn't I can't SOE it. Live. It might have just been an EverQuest convention. I, I really don't remember, but she couldn't make it. So she got in touch with Kukos and said, hey, I want to have this get together at the house and everything. And um, so we all met over at her house. And then six months later, we decided to do an official grievance one over in Kukos's garage. And we actually had a person drive all the way from Kentucky to meet with us for three hours at Applebee's after we left Kukos's garage. Holy cow. <laughs> he was one of the founders as well, Sigma Don. He still pops up at the time. Fanfare, yes. Um, so fast forward five or six or seven years, and we ended up having to get together at a restaurant. Um, we, just, we literally just had these three-hour get-togethers at restaurants. It was mostly people in the southeast that came. We'd occupy a restaurant for three hours. Um, remember, Geekdom wasn't big back then. So <laughs> it, um, we'd occupy about three hours at a restaurant, and then we'd go our separate ways. Well, this, this next time, um, or this time in Pensacola, when we met at a restaurant off of Nine Mile Road Corner in Nine Mile and Pine Forest, do any, anybody's familiar with it? I don't remember the name of it. It doesn't exist anymore. But um, we met at a restaurant there and everything, and then it was kind of hilarious because we were – dropping off um, my boys at the time or no we were picking up my boys at my parents house at the time and my mother says why don't you just do it well are y'all going back out with everybody I said no nah, they're probably going to a bar or something like that I said we're just going to go back to the house she's like why don't you invite everybody over here you know she's never asked me that again <laughs> 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 and um, so it, it was the first get together that stretched into the night and then we didn't have another one for a year, and they became, first it was a Saturday and Sunday event. People would come on Saturday. It was just an all-day Saturday event. Then we added Friday to it because everybody could meet at a restaurant, and we'd have the all-day and night barbecue during, during Saturday. And, and then later on we added Sunday, and then this year we added Thursday. So the official get-together is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And literally, for $45, you know, with the exception of the lunch with your guild leader, which obviously you're going to pay for your own meal at whatever restaurant your guild leader wants to meet at, with the exception with the lunch for your guild leader and your travel and hotel cost, it's $45 to eat literally all you can eat, have all the fun you want to have, and get to meet people you game with. And, and, of course, starting last year, there was a special spin put on it because, you know, we, we kind of involved the whole QuestCon theme and everything like that. And that's going to be really prevalent at this get-together, too. There, there's going to be a lot of QuestCon into the, into the grievance get you know, I mostly be grievance, but um, I'm pretty sure last count I had, we're going to do a photo shoot the Sunday after our breakfast, you know, the breakfast we have in the morning, and then we're all going to clean the house. Um, but, <laughs> but the... Um, the Sunday in the afternoon, we're going to do a photo shoot with the adventuring team members. So um, we'll have Marissa and Eggy and Thilo and um, Zucker Rain, who's in chat right there, and, and they'll be doing a group photo shoot, the four active adventuring team members we have. And it'll be really cool because, one, it's a castle. It's a freaking castle. I, I Wendell, if you, while I'm talking, if you can pull up the video 
at the 15 minute mark and 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 pull that up it's on the um it's somewhere but if you can pull that up but i mean it's a castle so what better place to do some really professional photography with some really cool background to where we can i mean this is the stuff that goes on our quest con flyers goes on our our videos goes on you know the <laughs> website and, and and everything like that. It's not a chateau. That is not a manly word. It's a castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, castle do. sounds way better. <laughs> That's why I said chateau. that where you can respond. <laughs> <laughs> if the description says chateau, it's a freaking castle. It's got <laughs> right. a helicopter pad. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so no, I found it. It's a chateau. Does well, it have a boat? Is a chateau Fran uh, French for castle? Kind of, you wait till you see the size of the pool. It, it's kind of modish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really really cool, and and you know the the whole the whole thing is, man. I don't know if we're gonna ever top this unless one day we build something of our own, which is entirely possible. You know, it's really cool. When do you got that video yet? <laughs> I'm trying to find it. I, where'd the post go? It's it's on the um, top of the forums under important grievance information, real life get together. There's a video there. Did I, did I go to the wrong place? Team speak. Oh, I went to the wrong place. I'm an idiot. That's another fact. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you'll see in this video, you're going to see where we went last year. We had 81 people there packed in like oh, sardines, 15-minute yeah. mark again, by the way. And then it's going to, about two or three minutes in, it's going to show you where we're going to be this year. And this place is going to, if you haven't seen this, if anybody in chat had not seen this, this is going to blow your mind. This is what we're doing from Thursday through Sunday. And for those, those staying at the house Wednesday to Monday, you know, this is... <laughs> Yeah, this is this is really really cool. It's um there you go. Sky puts you a link up there too, Wendell, if you need it. <laughs> I got it there. I uh, got it there. So y'all check this out. Go go to the 15 minute mark and show the show the thing. Give it some volume too, if you will, if you can. And, um, you don't have an ad blocker for, for YouTube? No, no, I don't. I'm sorry. Come on, it's you block. It's easy to download. <laughs> but it is. You're not going to get better than this. No, I mean, the amount of square footage, I mean, places can be huge. Literally, you're going to be walking around trying to find people. Well, no, say, I, we, I we rephrase have... that. Let me rephrase that. You're not going to be walking around looking for people. You're going to be walking around looking for the person you're looking for because there's going to be so many people so spread out. Actually, finding that one person is going to be hard. So you're just going to want to walk around, walk around and just talk to people and see who shows up. Well, you should be walking around talking to everybody anyway. That's the, kind of the whole point of this. It's, yes, but sometimes you actually want to find one person. and That's true. They're going to be like on the other side of the house. I claim the bear. <laughs> Sorry, just joking. What we need to do is uh, everyone's name tags and to put RFID tags in them, and then just have the house scan and have this giant map sent in the center, and uh, that way everyone can see where everyone's at at a moment's notice. Ooh, yeah, should... that would be sweet. We can have like <laughs> so... a we can have like a Marauder's map of grievance, <laughs> everyone... like grievance map. Just set up an iPhone app or whatever, or an Android. Yeah. App. Where is Steel? <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, no, I'm sorry. Just send text. Just send steel text. It'll be like a homing beacon. Shing, shing, <laughs> shing. But as y'all as y'all can see by the video, this place is ginormous. If if you're in grievance, you know, or you're you're doing anything with QuestCon or grievance, you need to be here. You you're not going to beat this type of event. Yeah, and look at all those people. <laughs> hey, yeah, look at that yeah. guy. That was I'm, one of four tables. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm all the way in the back, squeezed against the wall, and the only way in there, the only way that I was able to get out was I had to crawl under the table to get to the other side. There were so many people there. It was awesome. I think it hey, actually hey. took me like 15 minutes to find somewhere to sit because there was nowhere to sit. 
Well, yeah, y'all walked yeah. in the room and everybody's <laughs> like, hey. Whole, we took up the whole room but that one little table at the end. Yeah. That was all, the awesome thing was there's 80, I forget how many of us, standing outside of this establishment. <laughs> And all of a sudden, over the loudest speaker, here, grievance party of eighty, and just like everyone oh. just looked up, it was awesome walking through. <laughs> <laughs> they took care of us. It was it was great. It was oh, fun. I'm pretty sure they oh. loved the tips they got that night. I'm pretty sure. Oh, the uh, the dessert cabinet, the cake cabinet. Oh God. Oh man, oh. those were amazing, weren't they? Yeah. Well, it was oh. at a cafe, man. They're famous for their like slabs of freaking. Pie and cake yeah. and everything. We, we like left that. some some tiramisu that was awesome. Oh, oh was so good! Beautiful. I, I had a carrot cake that was great. Matter of fact, I think I ate off of that for three days. <laughs> they, yeah, <laughs> they were not small. They were huge portions. It was it was great. Yeah, All and right. now, um, and now we, um, grievance is planning a convention. Yes, yeah. yes, y'all are really putting me on the spot tonight. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. Show your shirt, Vanquish. Show okay, your shirt. okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me take a moment here, okay? <laughs> Who here, raise your hand, believes that Steel does not like talking about this stuff? Does not. <laughs> really? Does not. <laughs> no? Does not. Where have you been, Zo? Do you pay attention? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Because <laughs> Steelheart's here complaining that we're putting him on the spot, but let's be real here. Who? When does he shut up about this stuff? That's <laughs> true. This is true, and I'm definitely not camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, um, Steel Soapbox QuestCon. What's QuestCon? Um, first of all, I'll just tell you exactly what we tell everybody else. This isn't your standard standard dog and pony show with a flea market. Most conventions, especially if you've ever been to a wizard con, um, not to call y'all out, sorry, but it is what it is. Um, most conventions, you go, you pick up your tickets, you go through a vendor room. You get your autographs and signing. You may see a panel or a speaker or two, and, and you're done. It's over. That, that's your con. It's, um, and most of these cons are dog and pony shows of flea markets. That, that's literally what they are. You know, the guests are the dog and pony show, the flea markets, the vendor hall. QuestCon's going to have all that. Don't get me wrong. We, we have some unbelievable guests we haven't announced. Hell, we got our own adventuring team. That looks awesome. Yes. You know? But, you know, it's this we're going to have quest. There are going to be people that are actually going to get to do quest at the convention and throughout the city. And the grand prize for the epic quest and um, the person who gets the most achievement points. Yes, we'll have achievement points. Who gets the most achievement points is going to be a hotel room and a VIP, two VIP tickets for the next con. You know? It's, um, we're going to have dynamic panels and workshops and gaming and more gaming. We're going to have, I hate to call it rides, exhibits. There's going to be, oh my God, we're going to have Apocalypse Global there. A live action zombie shooter. <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, we've, we've got people that are more excited about shooting zombies over and over again than they are anything else about the convention. You know, we've got the Halo drop pod ride where you get a pilot a drop pod down to a safe landing. We're working on a couple other things that are really, really cool. I can't talk about. We've, um, the there's some. The Apocalypse Experience? The, well, that's Apocalypse Global. Yeah, the Apocalypse Experience. Um, we're in the process of paying that person. We're in the process of, thank you. We're in the process of, um, of um, working with some VR people, you know, and, and bringing something really cool from that aspect in there. So you're literally, it's, it's going to be more than just walking around looking at things and listening. You're going to be able to interact at this convention. It's, it's like nothing that you've seen at another convention. You're and, really and, in an open. Speaking of the special guest, uh, Gigi Edgley from Farscape, Gianna. Yeah, Paul she's Amos. our first guest we announced. Mm -hmm. Paul Amos will be there. And from Dungeons and Dragons, Robert Schwab. So, oh and man, that's just I, the tip of the iceberg. I yeah. mean, at 30th, we're doing a pre event in Mobile, Alabama at the Alchemy Tavern. It's a cosplay for charity contest. We'll be um, raising money for the Haven, which takes in stray dogs and cats, and, and it's a no kill shelter. 
and um, basically we'll be raising money for them. And during this contest, we'll be making two really, really cool announcements about a couple groups coming into QuestCon that are going to be doing some unbelievable things. Um, how even our, and, and I'm not going into detail, but it'll be coming out here soon, even our photo ops are not normal. <laughs> That's Vanquish. It's, it's, oh, yeah. so, it's not the normal photo op you're used to. <laughs> So when you take oh, a I think I know what you're talking guest, about. You're going to have a hell of a lot more than just a photo op with a guest. It's, uh, and, and really, and, and we're in the process of hammering out contracts with a lot of people. There, there, there's so many guests. Well, I shouldn't say so many. We're not going to have 50 or 60 guests. I can promise you that. We're going to have about 20 really cool guests. Um, but these guests are really, really just going to excite people. Awesome. Uh, really awesome. Now I think you've got, uh, I think you've got what two announcements <laughs> coming up on April thirtieth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And heart attack. We don't do anything normal, and we don't do anything <laughs> small. <laughs> no, it's great. It's, it's, come, it's... come big or go home, brother. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So this is gonna be really exciting. It's. And just the fact that Grievance is expanding out and doing all this other stuff because we've got. You know, we've got the QuestCon, we've got the get-togethers that we do, we've got GTGN that, that we're, we're, we're working on, we're trying to get there, we're trying to get some nice content going. Um, speaking of which, I know we're keeping you from that meeting. Ah, go on, we've got a few minutes. I made an announcement in TeamSpeak. I'll give you all about five or ten more. All right, we've got a five more. Okay, one, cool. Awesome, we will push the hell out of this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what, can we, what, what do we want to talk about for five, ten minutes? we got The Walking Dead, we got... Uh, Let's see. Oh, oh, let's talk about the um, cliffhanger. Okay. Oh, God, let's should, not should, talk about the cliffhanger. Uh, yes, let's do it. Should we spoilers on this? Should we spoil? Um, what, what's the spoil? They didn't show anything. The <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but we um, keep it keep it gray. Okay. This yeah. is like a this is like a yellow spoiler alert. Uh, let me change this to yellow. Well, we'll I can change the uh, color of the spoiler alert. This yeah, is a spoiler alert <laughs> yellow because, let's face it, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, did, I okay, immediately first off, first, and sorry to interrupt, but first off before you go into it, did anybody really expect to see who died? Honestly, yes, I did. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. Because I've no. read, the graphic, no, I, I I've read the graphic novels, but I, and anybody else who's read them, I expected to go several scenes after that where there's another interaction and then they're just left alone. They just all walk away. Yeah, but this is The Walking Dead. They always end with a cliffhanger. But no, here's the fact. I thought the cliffhanger was going to be something more like, well, in this instance, because of what it turned out to be, I would have thought the better cliffhanger would be them being left in the woods with their dead body and having them <laughs> left alone, and then you'd have like a circle of all their faces of like the terror of, of the reaction of what happens, and then there's the end of the cliffhanger because you don't know what they're going to do next because you know – you know, Rick, uh, uh, Carl or uh, Rick is like batshit crazy right now, and I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to point out even episode one hundred, which is where this occurred, did not end at that scene. No, it didn't. They, no, they kept <laughs> going. So the cliffhanger was AMC, how, brother. <laughs> how are they? How are they going to? Uh, uh, you know, the cliffhanger in the comics was how are they going to react to this? How are they going to survive? Because up to this point in the comics and, and the TV show, they've been untouchable. They've they've overcome everything they've come up against, and now they've come up against Negan. And Negan, if anybody who's read the comics, be prepared. Negan makes the governor look like a preschool teacher. Yeah, that's what I was hearing. Crazy. And I, I've also been hearing things. Oh my goodness, he has a beard. Negan don't supposed to have a beard. I'm like. Come on, it's artistic license. They have to this be is the numbers. apocalypse. How many people are shaving? Really? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. This is true. Yeah. But uh, the the main difference here, and I haven't seen the comics. I'll tell you straight up. Anybody knows? I have not read the comics, so I don't really know what's going on. Other than the fact, I know Negan's a big deal. Negan's bad. Negan has Lucille. Um, right. But what I'm looking at this from a viewer standpoint is what looks to me Negan has probably damn near at least a hundred guys there, and they're not they're not the Woodbury residents of like oh hey 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 you know we're just trying to get by and and where where the governor had like you know twenty actual fifteen guys that were actually you know hardcore you're looking at Negan has like a hundred hardcore guys right there. Oh, this is an army. Yeah, yes. right. It is. 
and and but I'm just pissed off six months. Well, here's what's going to happen <laughs> is they're going to you will know if you watch social media. You have to basically stay off the internet and avoid anything Walking Dead, or you will know before the episode airs. Because I guarantee you, people who are fanatics about this show are going to be looking at casting calls. They're going to see who's showing up, who canceled their lease in Atlanta. They're gonna. You will know yes. before it happens, oh, and no. that's my I problem. I can already tell you, but I'm not going. Oh, to. Yeah, I like, know Shiv yeah. disagrees. I I can yeah. see them doing that too, but I honestly, uh, at some point we'll have a conversation offline because I okay, think if uh, they went a different direction. I think it would actually have the impact that the comic did and really screw with the fans. Well, well I see. I see one more. It could be, but I still think they're going to remain loyal. Well, here's the thing. Number one, we're in the spoiler zone, so if anybody hears anything they don't want to hear, they should have left already. Uh, Two, you better change it to red. <laughs> Two, <laughs> okay. uh, who, what Walking Dead fan has not heard somebody that they know and have talked to mention who's going who's gonna to be supposed to have been killed in the comics? Yes. I have talked to about ten different people now about, about this episode of The Walking Dead, and pretty much... Seven out of ten of them have have said who the who the comic book. Oh yeah, was. I mean, well, perfect case oh, yeah. in point. And it's not really a spoiler anymore. But Andrea didn't die in the comic books. No, she's a badass in the well, comics. She, she married Rick in yeah. the long run. Oh really? Oh yeah. That would have been um, interesting. So, and I mean, there's a couple of there's some new characters that are getting ready to get introduced that that if they're not following the comics now, there's some love interest that just got completely screwed up with some of the pairings that just happened. Um, but. Like like Steele said, the the people who are dead in the comics that are still alive in the show, and vice versa. Um, Daryl doesn't even exist in the comics, so no, he's uh, totally an AMC creation. Yep, uh, and, and, is, a uh, one, they, and a good one, and a good one. The guy in, uh, for example, uh, back in season four when we were going to have Santiago on earlier, he was going to talk about. They don't know if his character's dead or not. He was going to talk about that. A oh, Asha, there, there's definitely in the comic books, and they, they will never, I really doubt they'll show just how gory this I was. Took, I actually took my tablet in, because uh, I've been hyping the show for people at work um, that have never read the comics, and kind of like, guys, just be prepared that it could be very brutal. And after the letdown that the season finale was, I took the comic in digitally and let them read that entire sequence. Yeah, and this got, this was they a got to that point brutal graphically brutal murder yes. in, in the graphic novel. I mean, it was... I really say, even the, ga the, the game that they came out with, it's kind of graphic, too. Nothing say. like this. this More so than like like the, the old man said off. Like the comic. Oh, yeah. I this said. In the comic, it's, it's very graphic. I, it's very emotional, actually. Oh, yeah. I got to that point. And I just reached up, turned off my tablet, and stopped reading it for about a month because it just it was that much of an impact. It was wow. like, oh, it was. Yeah, I'll tell you what, dude. and it, and it will be the same impact if if they. And I I still I'm one of the people that think they're gonna. I know they've deviated a lot in the storyline, but I'm one of the people that think that they're this is gonna be homage. They're gonna pay homage to the graphic novel, and and the death in the graphic novel is gonna be the exact same death that TV show. And well, I don't, I don't think I'll be upset with that. Uh, like I said, I just, I don't feel that we had the emotional payoff to that storyline that Gimple and Kirkman think that they, that they provided. I think it was just, I mean, yes, everyone, you know, we've got your cliffhangers, but this one just seemed lame to me. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, Wendell, uh, look at in chat. There's someone put a link there, and it, it has Negan's bat in. Uh, in the division. <laughs> oh yeah, that was pretty yeah. funny. Oh, the division has on... tons of Easter eggs. Oh yeah, yeah. Where I'm on Facebook a lot, and I mean a lot. I, <laughs> there is there is literally, literally, a post about Negan in the season finale every thirty seconds. And a lot of it's just from one spot, but I mean it's like all day long. It doesn't matter that I haven't watched the season because honestly, I haven't. I can probably tell you the whole, whole season <laughs> just from everything I see on Facebook on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody there can see uh Negan. There's a lot of pissed off seal. people about the season. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. no. I mean heck, I'm pissed off. It's been slow and then you know the huge build up for Negan. Everybody is leading up to it. And heck, even the whole show 
it was a lead up to this because he knew something bad was going to happen. He knew something was going to happen. And yeah, something did happen. And we to didn't see man. it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I do I like to I still can't target. believe y'all expected to see it. All they ever said was Negan was going to show up. Yeah, I know. I just, I, I was hoping they wouldn't do that, to be honest. I was. Because the, 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 the way the way that the the actors and everybody were hyping it, you know, this show was the worst one they've ever filmed, and and they you know they couldn't sleep that night. They just couldn't, you know, they didn't want to finish reading it. It just seemed. I'm but like, they oh, didn't for finish what? the show. For what? Yeah, what are you... because they finished the filming sequence. They were all there. The no, sequence no. is finished. No, from a, if if you watch the Talking Dead afterwards. They said that all the actors had left. That Negan was act. That that scene was filmed with none of the a principal actors there. Oh wow! Oh really? <laughs> yes. So they don't even know who who supposedly. And I don't know if this is more marketing, but supposedly they had all wrapped for the night, and it was just uh, the fi that filming of that scene wow. with just Negan. Yeah. I mean so. th that that. <laughs> I still say what I said earlier. It would have been be a better cliffhanger to complete the scene show the scene and show Negan's guys walking off and 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 Rick and the guy and the and the team there is basically just left to recover and and the and the uh, the better the better cliffhanger would have been well shit what are they going to do now right. they just got their they just got their asses beat uh, and again, I love the the filming of this scene. You get or this this whole episode. You get to the one roadblock. There's ten guys. You get to the next roadblock. There's twenty guys and more cars. You get to the tree. Then you get to thirty or forty guys standing in the woods. And you're just like, yeah, you guys are screwed. You yeah, know? yeah. The build up to that, and then it is what it is. And I'm not I mean, I'm not going to boycott the show. I'll watch it come October. Now, <laughs> of course, you will. Side note, who else had my thought? Because I'll be honest, the last few episodes of The Walking Dead have been kind of boring for me. It hasn't excited me. It hasn't been too interesting to me. So I've been spending a lot more time scrolling through Facebook on my phone and stuff like that during the show. And all I could tell you is that they go up to the first roadblock there, and I'm looking at my phone. All I could hear, all I heard was like, I heard what happened. I'm like, Trevor? It is Trevor. It's the actor who did yeah. Trevor. Yeah. From Grand Theft Auto Five. It's Trevor. I'm like, I want to see more of him. Yeah. Because it, it, you could see it's kind of a little bit of Trevor in, in that character in the in the show, mm -hmm. and if he brings even some of Trevor's mannerisms, <laughs> insanity, mannerisms, yeah. psychoticness, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. that's going to be a fun character to watch. Oh yeah, yeah, that was absolutely. I mean, seriously, that's going to be nuts. Oh yeah. So yeah, I can't wait. Just to, I'm like I said, I'm I'm just catching up on the show, and I can't spoil myself to watch this stuff just where I could be up to date. Um, but I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, and I need to actually start reading the comics. Now it sounds like. <laughs> well, I, I think from a com discussion we were having earlier in the pre-show was that there is just enough. There's just enough homage to the to the co graphic uh, comic books and the graphic novels to keep people that have, have read them interested in watching. And there's enough, just enough difference from the comic books that people keep the people that have been reading the graphic novels excited and interested because there is going to be differences and it's trying to figure out where the differences are and where they took the artistic license. Yep. All, right. All right, guys, we got to wrap this. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, we were kind of getting to a slow point here. Either way, I think consensus is we're all kind of pissed off with the episode. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Except for maybe Steel, who was expecting it. Eh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. It's been well interesting. Yeah. You know, to say that, especially with all that's happened today. So. <laughs> yeah. So this is a little little short notice show for Steel. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we do want to get Santiago back because even just during the pre-show, he was hilarious. I really want to get him on the show. It is going to be fun. Oh yeah. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll let you guys know. Um, just kind of keep an ear out. Steel, thanks for joining us. Short minute. Pleasure. Uh, uh, Zo, Vanquish, Shiv, thanks for coming on, and of course, thank you guys for watching us. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye guys. Peace.